Okay, I'd like to call the May 3rd, 2023 meeting of the Long Range Planning Committee uh, in open, in an open environment here. Um, <clears throat> one of our first items to do this morning is to review the minutes of March 3rd. And actually, before we do that, just a minor correction to the agenda. It's actually March, uh, May 3rd, not May 5th. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so our first item is to review the minutes of March 3rd, our last meeting. Any comments or concerns about those minutes? If not, I will accept the motion to approve. So moved. Do we have a second? A second. All right. <clears throat> we have a motion and second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Marvin has his hand up as well, passed unanimously. Second item on our agenda this morning is the election of a vice chair. Uh, I don't know that we've actually had this conversation fully uh, in a uh, meeting session, but uh, I feel that it's necessary that we fill this position in the event I am unable to be here, that we have a person who's able to chair the meeting and move this committee on. Um, and with that in mind, I would like to nominate Rick Chenet to be the vice chair. And the nominee declined. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. Thank you. Uh, any other nominees for this position? I was going to nominate uh, Rachel. Okay. I, uh, I can't vote. She I, can't. I, I, she's oh, not a. She's not a voting member. All right. Sorry. But thank you very much. Yep. Marvin, I, I think it's a kind of a double-edged sword there. Anybody you want to nominate? I just don't want to forget you're there. Including yourself. Not a bit. Uh, I hear you. I'm here, and I have nothing further to add. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your hand. Got you, Marvin. Thank you. I showed that to be unanimous. Um, <clears throat> the third item on our agenda is to appoint a liaison to the Transportation Committee. A little bit on that. Uh, I held that <laughs> position, uh, or I currently do, I should say. Uh, until we have a new person approved as that liaison. Um, and I had mentioned at our March 3rd meeting that if anybody was interested in replacing me in that role, that I would accept um, uh, that application, if you will, to be in that position. Uh, I will say that Marvin very generously raised his hand for that position. I do totally appreciate it. He was the only one who raised his hand for that position. So with that in mind, I am going to appoint Marvin to that role. Now there's several things that need to occur before this becomes official. And that is his name needs to be brought in front of the appointments committee of the council my understanding is that they do not meet until, I believe, June 15th, um, which is the middle of next month. They then will uh, deliberate on that appointment and determine whether or not they want to bring it to the council. Once that is done, there is literally a first reading and a second reading. And the second reading may not occur until mid-July. So just so that everybody understands what that means is even though he has accepted that position, town council still needs to approve it. Final approval may not come until July. And so that is when that, that appointment will become official. So just in case anybody's wondering how that is. Um, all right. Item number four, which... <clears throat> I'm going to ask the question, does that mean we don't have representation on the committee before then? No, technically I remain in that position until uh, a new person is appointed by the council. 
So I will retain that uh, until a change is made. Um, fourth item on the agenda is to review acceptance of the comprehensive plan documentation recently that has come from the state. And Autumn, I don't know if you want to start this or if we want to give it right over to Karen um, for her to tell us what's happening with that document. I'd like to give it right over to Karen if she's feeling up to it. <laughs> Thank sure. you, Karen. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, so I think you all received the memo that sort of documents the process that we've been going through for certification. I am pleased to say that the plan uh, now as written with the um, uh, information from the state, um, we have now have a certified plan. That certification uh, is begins from the date of the certification, which was um, April 10th, and it lasts for the next 12 years. Uh, so that's good. It, it, the certification is from the date of, um, or the 12 year period for which comp plans are good, lasts from the date of certification, not the date of approval of the plan by the community. Um, so this plan, as it stands is now certified, and that means we can um, go forth and be be confident about uh, zoning, our uh, rate of growth ordinance, and all the other things that need to be consistent with the certified plan. So what that document that you received, the memo that you received did was sort of go through what the entire process of certification uh, has been over the last uh, year or so. And so, as you know, Jace, uh, Chase submitted the plan for certification. Um, Aaron, yes? I'm so sorry. Eric's laptop died about three minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> he couldn't hear you. Uh, okay. He could go back just about three minutes. Okay. Basically to the beginning, yeah, honestly. Yeah. I'm sorry, Karen, that was my fault. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's all okay. It's all okay. Uh, so we now have a certified plan. Um, the plan is now certified as consistent with the state goals and policies. And the certification process um, is what I'm gonna go through briefly um, this morning. Um, but the good news is that the certification that was received on April 10th of 2023 is now good for 12 years. Um, the community can make amendments and other things within the, you know, the this period of the 12 years, but the plan as it stands now is um, certified, and that means um, as we go forward and amend our growth management uh, program, which includes the zoning ordinance and uh, our, the growth management ordinance, or as we look, sometimes are calling it the rate of growth ordinance, those two ordinances can now move forward and, and um, uh, be consistent with, with the plan. So that's a really, that's great. Um, it's taken us a little longer than we thought it would. And that's what I'm gonna go through briefly right now. And then I'll answer some questions. I think the memo that you had goes into some detail um, about the process, but basically Jay Chase, the former planning director submitted the plan Mm, shortly after it was approved in, in 2021, sort of the end of 2021. And I think Jay and the state went back and forth for a variety of reasons. Um, I think the state reviewer, who is one person um, at a uh, reviewing all the, the comprehensive plans, I think he found that our approach of organizing everything by um, our vision statements made it a little more challenging for him to understand how it, they were meeting the state goals. Uh, so he and Jay, I think, were, were going back and forth, um, and the plan was a little bit in limbo as it is. And he didn't, the plan had not been determined to be uh, incomplete or anything. They were just going back and forth. Um, come June of 2022, Jay left 
and I inherited the certification process um, in the absence of um, uh, a planning director. And I talked with the state reviewer and I felt like, okay, if you're having trouble understanding where things are, let me take the state goals and take what our policies are from the plan and put that in front of each of the state goals. And that really helped him understand that yes, we had policies that supported <laughs> that supported the um, state goals and he began to feel more comfortable with, with that. In the meantime, we had submitted that in August of 2022, and we hadn't really received anything back from them. And so I was calling the reviewer like once a month, sometimes twice a month saying, hey, have you gotten to review the plan yet? And he really hadn't. Um, and so finally, you know, it's 2023, it's been a few months since he's had our submission of this um, uh, table that aligned our policies with the state goals. Um, and I finally said, hey, why don't I just come down and sit in your office and we could go through it. And lo and behold, that next day, I received um, the, the determination of uh, what he wanted to see in the comp plan. And so at that point, he's saying, okay, we've, we feel good about the policies, but we have a few more uh, pieces of data that we'd like to see. You know, some, some of the things were things that the, the state provided at the beginning of the comp plan and the way we approached that and the reviewer was great with that saying, hey, as long as you put it on the town's website, that's, that's okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the plan, it just has to be available. Um, so we we took all of those pieces that were missing and the ones that were strictly data from the state, we posted it with Eric's help, posted it back on the, the website. And so we took care of those deficiencies. And then there were a few others that required more of a statement. And that's why there's a second piece to the certification uh, process that we submitted um, that went through any of the remaining data items. And some of those things were uh, like they, they sorry about that, um, scolded us a little bit for not using the state's uh, uh, population projections. And basically our response to that is the population projections that the state did for 2035, we had already exceeded that in terms of our estimate. So there was no way we were gonna use the state's projections. They didn't, they were meaningless to us. So we just had to answer those questions. And that's what that second document was. In the first document, which is what I refer to as Supplemental A, there's a whole list of things that, um, you know, most of the time we could answer. Here's where it is in the plan. Sometimes it's a summary of, thing, of things, because again, um, we sort of had a, a, a more interdisciplinary approach to some of these, these items. And so that's why you'll see on the one side, you may see a summary statement that I've done, but we've addressed it on like 10 pages with 10 different pages with the, the comp plan. And so that's why we put all of those page numbers there so people could see where it, where it came from. There were also a couple of things that we didn't do in the plan. And that's because <laughs> they were things like, do we follow the state law? And I'm like, I don't think the town of Scarborough needed to say in its comprehensive plan that we indeed follow the state law. Um, we do. So we just had to meticulously go through and answer those questions. And that's really what that supplemental table A was. And again, you can see um, there, there are places that don't have any page numbers. Um, I'm going to say one of them was probably about certified code enforcement officers. Yes, we have certified code enforcement officers we have had for, I don't know, decades. Um, so we answered it in the table because they asked the question. Um, but I, you know, I don't think we need that. The, the comp plan didn't need a strategy that says we employ code enforcement officers. Um, and again, I think this is where I like to point out, you have to remember that 
this is based on the 1988 growth management um, uh, law. And that law was coming into effect when there were lots of places that didn't have uh, comprehensive plans. And what the state saw was uh, growth was beginning to encroach on more rural areas. And they wanted to make sure that um, the state as a whole really looked at the issue of sprawl. And so they were a little more prescriptive in the um, original legislation, which was great if you were a small community who had never done a cop plan before. But as I say in the memo, we're on our, I don't even know how many cop plans were before 1994, but you know, just in the last three comp plans where we've been more and more sophisticated each time in terms of um, dealing with emerging issues and things like climate change and affordable housing. Um, I, you know, I think the original legislation um, really doesn't suit us so well. And I think that's why there's been a lot of um, uh, potential changes at um, uh, the looking at the state law and seeing how it, how it works. But regardless, um, the state law is what it is, and we needed to address the details. And that's why I took the um, uh, affirmative step of saying, let me help you find these things within the plan so that you're not, this to the state reviewer, so that you're not looking for things and trying to build what that what our policy really was. And so he felt very comfortable with that. Again, um, you know, that's where that supplemental table comes from, um, that, pro you know, in terms of what we need to do next, um, I think, you know, the, the first piece is, um, I would say we should include those two appendix, those two documents as appendix um, within the plan so they can see what the state, what our process was with, with the state. Um, and Regardless, the the plan is now considered certified, and so we can sort of breathe a sigh of relief about um, us going forward with the rest of our uh, growth management plans, um, which is very important. Um, and I think there's, uh, you know, again, we've we've tried to align with the state policies and shown where we've done that, where we've done that, and where we haven't, we've shown why we didn't put something in the plan that addresses that. Uh, so those are the two basic pieces that we've done. Um, you'll also see part of the state certification process was they sent our plan out to various agencies and uh, the agencies wrote back and said, hey, you know, we'd love to see X, Y, and Z. That is not required. Um, our plan stands certified as is. Uh, any suggestions from the uh, letters from the state offices um, is under advisement if for consideration, but it is not required for us to do anything with those in order to enjoy our certified comp plan. Uh, that doesn't mean they should be ignored. We can certainly um, send some of those back. Uh, and this is a little out of my expertise in terms of the types, the, the um, agencies that were um, suggesting more information, but that can, um, some of that was more detailed than what's in the plan. And it's certainly acceptable to say, hey, you know, um, what do we think about some of those things? But our plan as is, is certified. Um, so that is a rambling uh, explanation of what's going on here. And I'm prepared to answer any questions. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, first question would be, if I understand properly now, the next comp plan is not due until 2035. Correct. Good. <laughs> so we better get started in what, 2028? So yeah, I mean, <laughs> we should this, start tomorrow. <laughs> this one only took us seven years. So let's just do the math. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Now I forgot what the second question was. Age, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, is there, um, of the items that they are asking us to appendix, if you will, to the plan, is there anything in your opinion 
that does not make sense for us to append uh, and make part of the, of the new plan? Or are you satisfied that everything that the state has requested makes sense? Wait, those are two different things. <laughs> I'm not going to say... I'm not going to say what the state asks makes sense. I am going right. to say that I, <laughs> that's a different question. Um, I am going to say that, that I, I feel like there's nothing, the only new things that are in the table are things that are sort of matter of fact. They're, they're either, sometimes there was a strategy that said, would you, you know, make sure that the website has X on it, which is a state program. Uh, most of the time that that was already there, um, you know, like there are some marine um, uh, uh, <clears throat> programs that actually we have on the on the Setco site that are available for uh, people to make um, to make application to programs that are ongoing. So we've just basically said that's a staff thing, something on the website that is um reflecting an ongoing state program sure of course we're, we'll put that on the website um if it's not already there we'll do that um the other things you know unless you feel like the plan needs to have a policy that says there's a code code enforcement officer then i think the statement stands we explain why we didn't put that in the plan is because it's a long you know we have code enforcement officers already and yes they are certified um and there are other points where they're just saying, are you following the law? And I feel comfortable saying that, yes, we, we are, and we intend to. Um, that is, I, <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't mean to be amused by it, but I, I just think it, it is hard to conceive of a time when um, we wouldn't be following you know, the, the law of the state of Maine. Um, and if we are, somebody's pointing it out and we're going to take care of it. Um, but again, so those are the things that are not in the plan. They're in the, the appendix and that's why they're there. Other than that, I, I, I don't think I was, uh, I don't think I was, was overly, um, I don't think I overly summarized anything. You know, I've got the sites and the plan, um, so I don't think it really changes any, it doesn't change, it absolutely doesn't change any policy in there. And if anybody sees anything that does, let's flag that. But th that was never the intent. And um, that's not what's going on here. What's going on here is making it easier for them to see that we did um, um, take care of these, these state level issues. Okay. I don't know, that's a long-winded answer. You've answered. The intent of my question. Okay. Can I ask that question a little differently? Sure. The letter from Mr. Maragliolo. From Tom. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tom um, says we don't have to do anything. Correct. But urges us to consider amending the plan to incorporate suggestions found in the agency comments. I will admit I did not read all the stuff. Back. Are there suggestions in the nature of things that we need to do, like put something on the website or do this or do that? Or are they suggested revisions to sections of the plan? Because if it's the latter, then I think we need to spend a little time considering them and then deciding whether we want to prepare something, I guess we have to go with the council. Mm -hmm. It's most of the suggestions that have been just adding extra information. And I think that's what Karen is alluding to. The appendix that we've created don't change anything. It just is more detailed. And it's updating our website with some extra links. I think we lost some links over time uh, when we created a new website. And so what council is looking for from you all is to say, yes, we, the plan has been certified, it's been accepted. We recommend or don't recommend adding these appendix to the document and then council will ultimately decide. So if we prepared something that could ultimately get posted mm -hmm. on the website and it said 
started off by saying our plan has now been certified by the state of Maine. Uh, the state requested that the information set forth in Appendix A to this notice be incorporated in the plan by vote of the committee on such and such a date. The committee right. recommended that the plan be supplemented, maybe is a better word, yes. with this information. And then we take that to the council and they approve it or not approve it. And then we put it in the, on the website. Right. If yes. if these things yes. amount to you know narrative change, yeah. right. but either way, the plan is still approved. Uh, whether uh, we do whether we recommend, you're talking then, about uh, two two things. Correct. The plan is approved uh, as as the letter says unconditionally. So, um, the we we. Uh, we do need to put the two documents in because the the two summaries. We do not have to include the state uh, department review comments. Um, those can be used supplementary as we go through, as we're implementing the plan, doing other things. So, and some of the some of the items in the state review, um, I think, were caught by putting the data items back on, you know, the website. Um, but like I said, the, the approval is unconditional um, and irrespective of whatever comments that the department's made. And the reason I say that is that the reviewer, Tom, is fully, uh, that was his job is to interpret everything and to say, hey, do we need this? Do you, we need you to amend this plan? No, we don't. The, in order to determine consistency, you do not have to amend this plan. Um, you do need, he doesn't say it quite directly, but part of the process are those two um, appendices, you know, th which really show how we how we are consistent with the plan. And that's certainly worthwhile um, inserting again as an appendix. Yeah, I don't want to make one. Oh. But I also think there's some uh, benefit to doing what I'm suggesting we do. And letting the state know we did it so that they don't think we said thanks a lot but we don't want to address anything further i mean there's some political uh, yeah exactly benefit to it, so. yeah. i don't want a harder look in 35. well you, state. Could, you could package it as an addendum yes we're going to narrative saying that there'll be an effort to incorporate these suggestions in the next version of the palm plan or with our implementation Yes. I have a question. Yes, Marvin. Yes, Marvin. And I don't mean to interrupt anybody, so I, I just oh, go ahead. want to get in line. Um, I understand the plan is certified, and I don't mean to be glib. Uh, however, uh, prior to the council's action approving what we submitted in 2021, for their approval um, and having read every single word of the final version, my question is, what is the plan? I'm not, I'm not really following that, what the, the explanation, Karen, is as detailed as it is and was that you just gave. I have somebody who comes to me and says, I'd like to read the comprehensive plan. I'm not following where I'm directing them. And uh, so I want to know, and I certainly follow what you're saying, Rick, about your suggestion. And I, best as I'm following it, I agree with it. Uh, and not even for political purposes, although I am sensitive to those, um, more for the purpose of the question I'm attempting to ask, which is, what is the plan? Where do I find it? Please, you know, not, not in any sort of vague way or opinionated way. I want to know X, Y, and Z. What is it? And where is it? So, and I, I do not, I'm sure it has been stated, but to my limited capacity, I haven't followed it. So uh, I don't know if now is the time to do that or not. It sounds as though it is, but 
Will you please outline very specifically, Karen and Autumn, where the plan is? What is the plan specifically? Obviously, the written document, but what else is required by the state to be included in it, and where do I find it? So I'll start, Autumn, and then you can fill in. The, the plan is as written. It's what, what, what the community adopted or the council adopted in 2021. Period. Correct. The two technical no, pieces. No, no, that no. Period or not period? Um, is it as written and as we submitted and as the council approved and that's the end of the story or not? That's what I'm. Okay. I'm, I'm hearing yeah. it's not. Right. Okay. Um, okay. No, we, Marvin, the plan is as written and was approved with the two appendices that we need to add that were required for us to get certification. And that's what we're requesting from you all is to say, yes, we'd like to approve these appendices and move on and we'll post that with the plan on the website as supplemental information. Correct, Karen? Yes. And, and, and thank you very much for that clarification. Uh, the two documents, the memo, and the letter from the gentleman that Rick attempted to pronounce his name and the uh, subsequent 40 odd pages of that. Uh, can we very briefly, will you very briefly go through and show me the two addendums that appear in either or both of those documents so that I know more specifically what those two are? Autumn, I don't know if you can bring them up on screen. I can if you can if, get them. If forward. you can't. So the 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 two items that should become um that we should include in the appendices as part of the state certification process. No, uh, no, no. Is it part of the state certification process? I, I know you know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm approaching it yeah. as kindergartner. Yeah, it, I don't it, know what the plan is. Sure. So it it those two ta those two tables should be included in the plan. Should uh, or must? I I'm not sure I know the answer to that. I, I would lean towards must because those that was the interaction with the state. Um, and if anybody is looking to see how we are, con this is our our proof of consistency with the the plan, if you will. Um, yeah. And so this, can you see the screen with the addendum? And this is what you all worked on even before um, I got here. This is part of the plan that needs to be um, included. Marvin, can you see all this on my screen? I can. Okay. And, and, and which document are you showing? So after, you know, so I can review this. Um, what so we're not this on. is part of your agenda attachments. Okay. And um, this is the addendum to Scarborough's action plan for implementation. Very good. And, and so, so on today's meeting. Correct. The the only thing I would suggest is that um, I went back through in the memo that that I sent the to Tom that you guys received that went to the council. I went back and painstakingly put in all the page numbers where the references to these things fall. And so I think that's probably the one that we should put in. Um, it's the same, it's the exact same document just with the page numbers uh, labeled. And I think I did some clarification because the, the policies on the left are the state where it says under category, those are all the states. The recommendations are, the, are our policies. And so I just clarified that in the table. And so I think that's the one that makes the most sense uh, to put in the document. And then there is the second. This is the state requested updates to data analysis and trends. And so this is the second item, Marvin, that we just filled out basically in February when we got back uh, comments from Tom at the state. And a lot of this is links um, and just some basic question answers like do you have a farmer's market that sort of thing and so this is that second item mr chair and, uh, and i have uh, one follow-up question 
uh, and that is, um, I appreciate very much, Autumn and, and Karen, you pointing these out to me. I, I understand it. It's basically all the pages subsequent to the gentleman's letter uh, are the two, uh, comp you know, comprise all the, uh, the information for the two uh, ad addendums. Uh, it sounds to me, my last question, I think it's my last, it sounds to me as though for a person to read the comprehensive plan, uh, not only do we need to read, not only does that person need to read the plan, they need to read these two addenda, if that's the plural, uh, and uh, and then cross-reference what's found in the addenda to the plan itself, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the page numbers you referenced. And my question is, that sounds to me as though it's subject to a lot of interpretation. I mean, uh, and, uh, and I'm always a little goosey, for lack of a better word, about leaving uh, such a document's interpretation up to every, you know, everyone, every individual who reads it. Did anybody else share that? Uh, I mean, yeah, if you don't mind, because I'd like to address Marvin's concerns. Marvin, this can, I, I, uh, when I read this agenda item, I think I felt the same way that things have changed. But because I was on the council that approved this, and we definitely know all the work you guys put in it, and it was a little painful over on the council side also. So when I saw this, I, I thought, well, if there's change, my mind immediately went to the process behind the dais of what could happen. So I really spent the time, read through the document. Great work, Karen. Uh, very, uh, you know, I spoke with MPAP at one time before I left the council because I wanted to find out what, what the status of the plan was and what was going on. And he told me, he's a very nice gentleman, he said, I'm a bureaucrat. I have a checklist mm -hmm. and I'm trying to go through this checklist and you've got a pretty fancy dancy plan here and I'm having a hard time find get my checklist. So really what Karen did, which is uh, the exhibit A, which I thought was great, is really just with the question and the policy uh, or, or the vision or the strategy, she just puts the actual page number that somebody can go to the comp plan as written and see that answer. So there has been no change to the plan. I felt very good about that. Uh, so, I, but I definitely can hear Marvin's concern, and I, I tell you, I anticipate I would anticipate that kind of concern maybe from the council, uh, which is legitimate. So maybe give it some thought about the presentation. I would recommend actually taking a couple examples. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, maybe John, maybe the chair might want a workshop, you know, there are workshops, but just take an example of something with a page number and maybe something without a page number and do the crosswalk real time. And you'll see that the plan has not changed. And I really don't think that an individual of the, of, of the population that wants to read the comp plan has to go to exhibit A, correct? That exhibit A's function is just to help the reviewer find his little checkpoints off. That's that's my opinion. I felt very comfortable with it. The only other suggestion I, I do on it is if there were some comments made by other agencies within the state, I would definitely package them and post them also. Because anything that, if there's an awareness they're there and that it's not posted, uh, it just may be unsettling for some folks. But anyway, great job, Karen. I read the whole thing. I actually understood the plan better. I said it had been a while since I seen it using the her documents. So Alan? Uh, um I might I'm kinda of, I'm with, with Ken there. Um sometimes too much information can create more confusion yeah. than necessary. Um what these addendums really are is an answer to the reviewer's question. Right. To assist the reviewer. And that's also dealing with responses from other departments. So it may be that instead of actually specifically attaching it to the plan, which raises a lot of questions, there's a separate section that says, 
state review process. Oh, okay. And that's where that's what this I'm sort of information yeah. goes with a um with the prologue that says all of this came from the questions the state had around the review period. Yeah. And yeah. then somebody wants to read it, find the find the page number, they can yeah. do that. Um, but it's clear that sitting right here is the plan. Sitting over here is information, background information, process of how a plan gets sort of a detail we could add to the amendment. Yeah. Right. If, if I could, just to kind of bring us back in, our goal today in regards to this item, I think is quite simple. And that is, do we recommend to the council that they accept the addendum as part of the plan and we ask them to approve that or do we recommend that they not accept the addendum and uh, make their approval based on what was submitted already and and i think that that's what we're being asked to do in, in my where i voting i would say the addendum is not accepted as part of the plan, <clears throat> but is part of an explanation of the process. The plan that was submitted is the plan that is accepted. Okay. Other and opinions. I can't make a motion, yep. so. nope. <laughs> Other opinions on that item. I would agree with Rachel's view. But it yep. does make some sense to post as a supplement, if you will, or addendum or whatever, or something on the so. website that says, you know, I'm happy to report that the plan has now been certified in the course of that process, the state of Maine provided and we responded to various questions. Sure. If you're interested, read the following, period. So it doesn't end up being an amendment to the plan, but it does indicate what the state looked at, I guess. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah. Otherwise, we're picking and choosing what we do. By what, way of yeah, what to include, what not to include. I like Rachel's. Okay. We do any. I'm not sure we want to go to the. Well, are we prepared to go to the council with this now, or do we need? Yes. To? Okay. They're they're wanting to act on the. Okay. Yeah. I, I. That's my part. Okay. Marvin, Ken. So, so Marvin, have... go ahead. Pardon me. No, please. Karen? Sure. Um, the, the one thing I, I the one thing that, that is perhaps somewhat different in all of this is um, uh, there is a requirement that there be some uh, piece of the uh, uh, CIP form of a document. Uh, that's put in here. And so that's why you see the 2023 uh, council approved um, CIP. So that should be part of, of um, the appendix. Um, it really should be. Uh, it That's already been approved by the council. So it's nothing new or different. Um, but that's, that's the only thing mm, that I would say um, was slightly different as they really did want that CIP um, included, but it can be referenced. And um, in fact, the reviewer did say that we can point to um, the website and and peep, and just have a document on the website that does that. Okay. Sorry, that may have confused things more, but. No, I, under I understood that from the beginning, Karen. I mean, uh, and you've you've touched upon my question, which was, what about the requirement for a link on the website? Yeah. Um, I I have to say, I'm 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 pretty uncomfortable uh, voting on this uh, today because I I'm I'm I, we need to have, from my point of view, we need to have further conversation about 
the something as simple and perhaps and as technical definitely as how what the, what is the relationship to the required link on the website to the comprehensive plan and how is it uh, referenced in the comprehensive plan itself and and what's the relationship and uh, what specifically does the link include if it is these two addendums then it sounds to me as much as I liked what you said too Rachel uh, suggestion wise uh, it, it, I'm rambling but this seems to be a vicious circle where uh, the snake is chasing its tail as far as what's the plan and 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 what's not the plan so i'm i'm a little uncomfortable making being able to vote on a recommendation to the council based on the fuzziness of at least how i'm viewing what we're really talking about here can i suggest that as discussion continues if it is to continue that we have a motion in front of us one way or another that we can then take and I would say aim the discussion more specifically toward whether or not we want to make a recommendation. To a more formalized discussion. Correct. I, instead of going around in circles. Sure. What is the motion in front of us? We don't have one yet. That's my point. Yeah, there is no motion. There is no motion on the floor. I'm suggesting somebody make a motion so that we can pinpoint our discussion toward the motion. I would I would move. I, again, this is in a sense a question, but if appropriate, I move that we table this to uh, our our next meeting in June with with uh with final uh resolution to what very specifically the plan requires and includes both the written document obviously and the link and if anything else is required as well so between now and our june meeting we i for one can actually review the document as it is being suggested that the council approve it and not in pieces that I have to put together myself. If that's a too long a motion, uh, I suggest something along that lines be uh, moved. I, I move we table this discussion uh, as I, for reasons I just described until our June meeting. All right, is there a second? Second. Okay. <clears throat> so we now have a motion in front of us to table this and we can seek uh, pinpointed discussion. Autumn? Well, I, I would excuse me. Oh, Just for process, I do believe a tabled item, there is no discussion. Oh. Correct. That's okay. I, But I do believe, again, little loose here on the process that if desired the motion could be removed before the vote of the table so you indicated there's no discussion until there's not on a council level i'm, I'm okay. assuming the rules are the same here and i wish it's is the motion been seconded yeah it has by right just been seconded so can i ask another procedurally uh, Marvin could withdraw his motion. We can you, start or you could withdraw your second. And then a motion will have a second. I just want to talk about what we're going to do here. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's a withdrawal of the second, I uh, I have a motion. Breaking all the laws. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll withdraw my motion if we can try to get through this. Okay. Then I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair. I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we suggest to have a joint workshop through town council as soon as possible to go over the intricacies with this because again if uh I, I understand where barbara's coming from and i see that sentiment that might surface otherwise so to avoid that uh maybe a joint workshop okay do we have a second for that motion 
could I suggest that or could it? Uh, I think we have to act on this we motion. Kill this motion. We have to either kill this one or. And just don't second it, and we'll die on the vine. Okay. I think. Marvin, you. I'm sorry, Rick. Marvin, can, did you hear Ken's motion? I, I did. I, I. I mean, we're we're in parliamentary procedure, whatever the rules are, and I don't mean to interject something that's inappropriate. So. The. Uh, my question to Ken's motion, and I'd be pleased to second it, uh, because I think Ken's mo I think your motion, Ken, can uh, then be followed after a second with discussion. Correct, but in advance so of that, that, we can we so, can discuss your yes. motion. All right, I'll second. Let's get going. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion regarding recommending a workshop with council, Rick? What I think we need to do, because yeah. it's obvious to me that some of us have not thoroughly digested what we got back from the state. My suggestion is that we plan at the next meeting to have gone through the stuff more carefully and determine what, if anything, we're going to do. Because as I understand it as a map legally, we have an approved certified plan, but we don't have to do anything. The state is clearly saying recommending, but but you don't have to. So let's review the stuff, come back at the next meeting and say, okay, what are we going to do to, if anything, to address this suggestion that we quote unquote amend the plan? And maybe at that time, once we understand exactly what the state is suggesting, then we can have maybe at that meeting, the vote is let's now workshop this with the council. And we talk about what we're gonna do. And then we can go ahead and either finalize something for the council to consider and adopt, and it ends up on the website or not. I'm just feeling now, I, I think I'm feeling kind of the way Marvin is, I'm really not sure where we are in terms of these comments back from the state. And I will admit, I have not reviewed that here yet. Mm -hmm. okay. I, 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 and my recommendation is that we parse very carefully, if we're waiting and we're going to have a workshop or whatever, that we parse very carefully uh, the third paragraph, which says um, that essentially as it stands, it is, an, it is complete and consistent. Now, that begins that this is the, the English professor in me that says with the uh, inclusion of additional material, I would suggest that Tom be asked um, if that clause with the inclusion of additional material um, mean that it must be part of the plan or if it's simply with it, now that I have that material, I was able to judge. In other words, does he want the appendix, did he want that material that Karen submitted to be included in the plan as an appendix or however it was done? Or is he saying when he got that material, he understood everything and the plan is now complete and consistent? If his answer is, yeah, I just needed to see that. I didn't need to know the page numbers, but or I, I needed to know the page numbers, but it's really not part of the plan because the plan itself that I reviewed is complete and consistent. What did he mean? If it's complete and consistent as it was passed by the council in 2021, thank you very much, that's the end of it. And we don't have to add anything from the agency comments. We can add all of the material and the process that we, that we went through which would mean that the town council is not required to take any additional votes because it's already approved the plan. Um, now, a workshop to explain what that means, how the implementation can be carried out, how the town council can talk about the plan, direct people appropriately. Um, you know, that's, that's fine. In my perspective, the more information people have, the more clarity they have, uh, throughout the town, the, the better off we are. 
um, it's, it's that third paragraph. And the interpretation of that third paragraph that really determines what's necessary. You, you, you know, I'd like just to make my comment here. Um, first off, we, we have an approved plan. We also have what I believe to be an affirmation that town staff feels that it's okay to include these addendums as part of the plan. I think they're fine with that. Thirdly, I think that to burden the council at this point in time with this issue is not worth their time. We're in the process of trying to get budgets approved. The last thing that they need right now is another workshop. I believe on something that staff already feels like we should do, that it's not harmful to the plan, that it doesn't add anything to the plan. It just clarifies the plan. I, I think we're going round in circles for something that we need not go around in circles about. And personally, I do not feel it's worth council's time, energy, and effort, and I would not support it. All right, let me follow up, if I may. I, and I, I understand where you're coming from, and Mike and Wade, that enough workshops don't like them. However, even the questions we're asking are going to be asked by the council. Uh, yeah. And then they're going to vote on something. So it's either going to be a full pass or a not pass. And I would think we go out of our way to assure that it is a pass because legitimately so, based on I've read every word of this document, that it should pass because I was one of the original voters. So a workshop to me was only explaining these little nuances that Marvin's brought up. And Karen, actually, you did mention one little thing that stuck in my mind was a SIP plan to be in the plan itself, the five-year plan, or as an addendum. I didn't know if I really felt comfortable with your answer. So again, I think these questions <laughs> could be avoided to be asked with a workshop, but but I understand your perspective of the workshop. And if I could clarify, if I could clarify on the CIP piece real yeah. fast. Um, so Tom M was comfortable with the CIP being posted on the website. Um, so as long as we had a link to it, and that's why in the addendum, you know, that that's that's part of it. Um, so as long as it's referenced that that you can find the CIP on the on the website. He felt like that was fine. It's a requirement, All right. not Thank recommendation, you. right? That one is, I I would say yes on that. It's a requirement, not a recommendation, according to Tom M. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rick. So I kind of think we're all saying the same thing, except Ken's suggestion. That my thought is that's possibility in the future. What I think we're saying is, at least what I'm saying is, I didn't understand today's agenda to require us to vote on anything. Oh. We're going to review the acceptance. We've done a good job on that. I'm not prepared to say yet whether we would recommend doing anything. What I'd like to do is plan at the next meeting when we've all had a, a chance to review this more carefully in light of what we're now discussing, to, to, deter, to discuss at that meeting whether there's anything we think needs to be done with respect to the plan as it is. And if the answer is yes, we need to formulate what that is. Then we would go off to the council, the Canadian workshop, and say, we got the re review, we got the approval, they recommended some stuff, we've gone through it carefully. We are suggesting or recommending to the council that the council act on the fall. And we lay it out. I agree with that. Is I think uh, well with Marvin's suggestion that we I don't want to say table because we can't discuss any of it. <laughs> but that we it's good discussion today. We move this off to the next meeting at which we all should be prepared. 
for the next meeting, would it be helpful if we create sort of a mock-up, if you will, of what it would look like yes. on the website yes. of what would be yes. available? We could do Rachel's Absolutely. suggestion. We could yeah. do yeah. as we'll do some different things. So it's very specific. This document is this. This document is this, and take sort of some of the questions. Mm -hmm. about it. I, I think at the at the end of the day. The appendix and the questions that we answered don't change the plan, but it sounds like there's a lot of confusion as to how the plan actually finally lives as a document. And so right. our goal was to not create any confusion. So I can give you yes, some. Yeah, my, I mean, my, my suggestion would be to um, have a, a fact sheet that says, you know, what is the comprehensive plan? How is it approved? Or what do we, what do, we do? How is it approved? What does it mean? You know, something like that, so that the public can take a look, go as deep as they want or need to go, and to understand what it means to have a comprehensive plan. Okay. And would it be possible to have that prepared, Autumn, say, uh, 10 days to two weeks in advance of our next meeting? So sure. uh, I don't mean to, uh, just as far as in advance, and my final suggestion is that I would feel more comfortable also. We barely have a quorum here to uh, enlist uh, all of the members of the committee. Uh, I'd, I'd feel better if those who have worked on this plan, at least as I have for the last three years, uh, weighed in on this as well. And Again, procedurally, because I don't know. If we were to hold a workshop with council, can we as a committee hold a vote for to provide a recommendation to the council during the workshop? Or are we restricted to only doing that during our monthly meetings? I I think so, uh, I think you would you would need to have to put a notice that says the Long Range Planning Committee will be meeting at the conclusion of the council of the workshop to vote on whatever to go to the council, um, which means then that on the council agenda, there would have to be something that said a vote or re on any recommendations that might come forward from. Okay. So it, it's, it's kind of complicated and I would suggest the answer is really yeah, not a good idea. Right. The only reason I asked the question for one reason, because, <laughs> and not that this should be the reason why we do anything. <laughs> but I know this is one of the things council wants to get behind them. Mm -hmm. All right. So that that's one item. Secondly, if we go down the road that we're suggesting right now, Chances are the workshop is not going to occur before our next meeting, which means that the workshop is going to occur sometime over the summer when the meet when the council meets less frequently. Right. By the time second reading would come along for the council, we're talking next fall. Just realistically to put a timeline to what we're discussing right now. So just want to have people thinking about that as well as we get down through this process. Now, having said that, is there any other discussion regarding holding a workshop with town council, which is what our current motion is? The only other discussion I would say is I'm not- Hold on, hold on. Pardon me. I got Rachel first, then Marvin. Pardon yeah, me. I I guess my advice um, or concern would be, be we need to be very clear about what we want to discuss. Because remember, we now have an approved plan, which the council has already approved. So the council, we need to be clear and the council needs to be clear on what we're asking to be considered. Yeah. All right, I mean, so that's what is proposing to prepare for us. Yeah, right. but I have a procedural question before, if I might. Sorry, Marvin. My question is if we delay the council's decision on the plan, are we delaying 
anything else are, are, are and I can't remember right now, but there were a couple of items that once the plan is approved could go into effect. As a result of the state finally approving our plan, there are other processes and or policies which we now move forward on in turn, and it could have uh, uh, impact on uh, growth management issues or something like that. Is any of that impacted if the council is not, has not approved the final approval? So, I just want to say the plan, council has approved the final plan. Okay. Council is looking for you all to say, as a long range planning committee, do we need to take further action on the plan? The council doesn't have to act on this. Okay. But what they're looking for from you all is hey, we're comfortable with these appendix. We feel that you should add these two to the plan in this fashion. And that's our that's our answer. Or oh, we hate it. We think right. we should workshop and start all over council. So council is going to get your recommendation and then decide for themselves and leadership if they want to take further action. It may be a resolution to accept the appendix and move on, or it may be a lengthy discussion. So they're not required to vote on it as is right now, but what they wanted from you all as a recommending body is what you think they should do based on the changes. What staff is saying that the state has approved our plan with the addition of these two items that are on your packet. We believe that we should add those two items as appendix to the plan, we're comfortable with that. It didn't change anything. It's just a lot of extra detail. Uh, as far as the other agency considerations, we do not believe we need to add anything additional, but to Rachel's point, it would be great to have a state review process so you could see everything that was included. So what I'm proposing for your next meeting in June is to give you a mock-up with a recommendation, A, B, or C, based on all the discussion, and then you can pass that on to council if you so wish. And then council decide essentially what they want to do with it. They'll have the same sort of discussion, I gather, and decide, do we need to take some more action? Or are we good with this? I think um, if staff and then you all are comfortable with it, council will have that level of comfort. And I think that's ultimately what we're trying to get to. Okay, thank you. Marvin, don't want to forget you had something. I appreciate it, Alan. Uh, I'd be very clear and to the point, the hang up I have here is when I listen to all of us, uh, I it's, it's the difference between the state recommending something and the state requiring something. And my understanding is the state has required Scarborough to do something. Uh, and those it's around those that or those requirements and i understand it as being one having a link uh, uh related to the cip up and running uh so also i think that just parenthetically i think and can i don't mean to sound as though i know anything about this in comparison to you but I think it. I think the council is going to be the one to uh, approve whether or not they have a workshop. Uh, so even if we were to recommend it now, they're still going to have to decide for themselves whether they want to do that. And uh, and finally, Alan, in relationship to the pressures, the real world world pressures having to do with the budget and the council's very busy and important schedule. Uh, I just don't think we should cave, and I'm not suggesting you're suggesting that we cave, but I think I think we have to stand stand for what makes sense to us in the face of the real world world pressures that you outlined very well. So as far as the motion that's on the table about the workshop, uh, my final comment is I will not be uh, in favor of that. I'm not in favor of that. Thank you. Do we have, yes, Ken? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll actually withdraw the uh, motion for a workshop and we'll kill it. Then, I'll withdraw my second. Right. Okay. And, and just to clarify, the reason why is because there's, it's, I don't think it's confusion. It's just there's a lot of movement pieces here. So the workshop was just a mechanism to try to clear the air with the council so they could vote on it with comfort because 
there's a lot of there's a lot of pages here to read, which will be part of a bigger agenda. And the council, as a prior member, really has value to the opinion coming out of this committee. So I really think the suggestion that Autumn made about the FAQ and putting it all together can eliminate that confusion. So it would probably be in the advisory uh, recommendation. Well, would it make sense, and without holding a workshop, to invite any and all council members to our next no. meeting to include them? I'm just asking. You're making you're making way too much of it. We have a we have a letter from the state of Maine that says our plan is approved and certified. End of discussion. Yeah. Correct. That's okay. part one. And we are done. We have a plan. The state's responsibility. In fact, I'm not even sure the statute requires this. But in any event, if it does, <laughs> we've got a plan. It's certified. That's it. If I'm on the council and I see this letter, I might say, does the long range planning committee recommend yeah. that we do anything further to amend the plan in light of the suggestion by the state of Maine. It's not a requirement. We don't have to do anything. That's what they're going to want to hear from us. That's what Autumn is going to help us on. And I'm happy, by the way, to help you on drafting whatever you want to do. The next meeting, we'll have something to consider. Uh -huh. Then we can decide whether that goes to the council. But right now, there's, there's nothing for, further for the council to vote on, if I understand that. We Correct. have a plan. Correct. It is certified. Yep. End of discussion. We could say we've considered all this stuff from the state. Thank you for your comments. We are choosing not to do anything further regarding the plan. Okay. I'm just not prepared to say that until I get something more definitive. I, so I really think that's where we are. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessary to invite any council members to our next meeting until we have something specific. Then we can present to the council, whether it's workshop or at a regular meeting. We can go then and explain our thinking. Okay, so I think we're, I we're think we're in agreement. Okay. Item number five: commercial design standards. Don't have my glasses on. Full okay. results, and we look forward to the comments from staff at our next meeting. Okay. Are you sharing your screen? Yeah. But uh, you're sharing your screen. I know. I've been sharing that, and now it's not. Hit stop share real quick. And then you might have to share. There we go. All right. I don't know um, how far along you want to get into this, Alan. I don't know what your time is for a hard stop. This is not a 10 minute conversation. <laughs> Alan, may I ask how long you want to go? Are we going uh, until 10? I, I saw that on the agenda. Uh, is this meeting until 10 or until 9.30? It's up to you all. Um, I'm open. I, I don't work. So this morning, my next meeting today is at one. So I'm open. But how much time do you think you need to get us to? Decide. Until 10. I'm, I'm available. I, and my follow up is Are all of our meetings going forward two hour meetings, or is it only this one? This is the only one that I was hoping that we could have some more time with. Well, so we had a really I, long agenda. I can stay. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you okay, Ken? Yeah. Okay. Rachel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do have a hard stop. If somebody needs to drop off, Karen, you need to drop off or whatever, feel free to do so. Uh, I would ask for five minutes for an item that's not on the agenda today before we finally leave the meeting. So let's go to so let's, 9.55. Yep. You get your five minutes. I get my five minutes. That's all, all right. I'll need. Thank you. All right. So to change focus quite a bit, <laughs> we're going back to our tour and our and our fun project, right? Our bus tour. And we started this with eight corners in mind. So that's what we 
we went through a lot of commercial design standards uh, conversations and really decided it was hard to think about all the different villages as one. So we started out with eight corners. Uh, just to remind you, um, these are the homework results. So, oops, this I think, let's see if I can get this. Um, so you can see that everybody likes the salt pump climbing company, none such river brewing. These are sort of ranked in order of like, yeah. mixed feelings and dislike. Uh, the least, I don't think you all can see. I'm not sure why I won't show my whole screen. Yeah, which one was the least one? Are you controlling that? I just, I was moving. Um, Mainly tubs was the least one, and it's off the screen. Oh. Eric and I both need new laptops. So, most liked um, salt pump, consistent with these are some of the comments that were gathered, consistent with use. Uh, the south side is plain, the angled windows were good. Um, is it sustainable? Like, is it a usable building for another use? That was an interesting question. And nice elevation changes. And so none such. The solar panels were good. The wood vaulted area, however good for some, was not aging well. And then it's kind of a modern barn. Sebago is a little bit odd, but it fits in. The awnings are nice. Nothing special. Outdoor patio. So there were some conflicting, even on the four top, you know, some people loved it. Some people were like, eh, sorry, right, it's fine. And then Payne Road Plaza, uh, typical uh, signage should be addressed, varied shape. It got sort of a, it's okay for what it is, sort of overall. Um, so then these are just some images to remind you what they look like. These are from uh, solar panels, art on none such. This. These are from Google. Um, but Sebaco does have some interesting shapes happening. So I kind of agree that there's a lot going on. Um, this is a Payne Road Plaza. It is pretty much your average 80s, 90s strip center with some brick uh, accents. So the middle of the road was Marshall's Creative Imaging Group and then Lazy Boy. So got some comments for these. Um, Marshall's, it's good, it's fine, but it's just typical big box. Um, creative Imaging Group, I kind of was surprised that this one didn't go up a little better. Um, but it's the brick building on um, Muzzy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. And then Lazy Boy. It was sort of, eh, it's nothing special, but it was it was okay. So these are just some reminders. Um, the Lazy Boy, Creative Imaging. Um, and then this is the office building up at the top right corner. So these four were the middle. Um, and then the least liked Texas Roadhouse. Um, no one likes Texas Roadhouse, I think, except maybe one person. Um, and it's funny, it's a completely masonry, you know, but it it is very kitschy, if you will. Uh, LaRue Kitchen, the colors, uh, lots of glass, but didn't help. Fairfield Inn, and then mainly tubs. So these are the ones that people didn't like. And what I found when I was going through these, and this is just me as a planner sort of thinking, a lot of, and these um, results and then the results for the tour, I sometimes found, I felt like some of the comments were based more about not how it looked, but what was inside of it. Like Fairfield Inn is the hotel, it is, motel, it is what it is, right? And I almost, like when you look at the picture, it's not amazing, but it's not so different from something that received more positive comments. So it's trying to, I struggled a bit and then I finally came uh, to some conclusions with this on what it is everyone actually liked and didn't like. So I do have some recommendations, but it took me some time to get there. Um, so these are the findings from um, the homework. So eat this or drive it, um, no one really likes it. So lazy, um, Fairfield Inn has a lot of that, right? That material. And then Lazy Boy is that material and home goods. But there's not any on any of the things that people like. So I concluded that that was 
a limiting, that was a material that we should really look at limiting or prohibiting or some sort of, that seemed to make sense. Flat roofs are okay. Architectural metal is good. Um, earth tones are good. Brick, red brick. And you'll find that in the tour. Everybody <laughs> likes red brick. Um, elements are good. No kitschy franchise. Uh, context is important. And then window trim was important. So then when I went out to the tour, everybody lo loved, everybody likes the latitude at South Portland uh, the best. And then Knightsville, uh, five to one, Falmouth, uh, four, one, one. So it was cool, sort of a mixed bag. And then uh, Rock Row. There wasn't a lot to look at at Rock Row and it wasn't um, special. The pictures on the website are beautiful and flashy and cool, but in person so far, I'm not there yet. Um, so Clark's Pond, the one everyone liked. Um, a lot of wall projections. It had that tripartite architecture where you really get a base, metal, and top. So there's different materials and different treatments. You can really see that. And that's, um, you know, that one, two, three part. Um, covered entryways, mix of colors. <laughs> so there were neutral tones, but I'm on top of brighter colors as well. Uh, again, that contrasting trim on windows, the flat roof, outdoor space, Lots of windows, lots of glazing, high transparency. So this was um, New England vernacular. No, <laughs> that was one of the comments that we got. Um, so uh, again, it sort of meets what we, sort of the same kind of things that we liked with the homework. Um, so Knightsville was a little bit different. Uh, it's a mixture of old and new. Uh, it has flat and peaked roofs, uh, has a mix of materials and some off street parking. So the findings on that one were roughly sort of the same. Um, there was a lot of variety. And so that was a good mixture of colors, mixture of materials. Again, that red brick showed up that I think people really like. Window trim, earth tones, articulation, there was some movement, quite a bit of glazing, and the base was treated different. Most of these were. I think this is a good example of the base is treated differently from the rest. It's not truly that tripartite, but you do have some differentiation the stories. Um, so then Falmouth, uh, it's a commercial shopping center rehab. And so it's a little, it has a rehab, a big area, and then some new mixed in. So again, you see the muted colors, uh, peaked and flat roof. New England vernacular, yes, especially for the rehab, I think. And that's with the clapboard sort of um, look. False windows on the second story and then brick. So I think in the comments, um, I got that folks liked the buildings with brick more because it gave some um, differences. My own personal comments, there's a lot of triangles going on, right? So there's a lot of attempt at making the facade interesting, um, but I think overall they did a good job, but it may be a little bit too much almost. Um, but similar colors again, so those muted earth tones with that red brick. New England, because it does have that clap Um, The false second story and glazing, there's quite a bit of transparency. Um, again, that tripartite feature, especially when you look at the newer building, and you can kind of see there's some different things going on with this one. I think they did a good job. And this one, while the window trim is contrasting, it's not as strong as that first, that Clark uh, Road that we saw, but it's very similar. It's very modern, contemporary sort of design. And overall, I think you all as a group liked the new. Um, Probably rock, the infill too. Right. That made a, I think, a huge difference, difference in terms of just looking at this massive parking lot mm -hmm. with buildings in the distance. Right. So I just filling felt, those void, filling the void, but it, but also masking the parking. Right. Right. Kind of wrapping around. Correct. Yes. <laughs> uh, rock row. There's no pictures. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so 
this is what we, this is, these are the findings, right? So the overall things. And again, just thinking about eight corners, as I was going through these, I'm like, oh, okay. So eight corners maybe is this really cool space where it's a little bit more modern, where maybe we don't have clapboard. Maybe we have metal and brick and glazing. Maybe that's because we're really trying to create different villages, right? So if you're thinking um, Oak Hill, maybe Oak Hill is where we have the clapboard and we have the cupolas and we have the shaped windows and we have that sort of quaint New England architecture. And then maybe Eight Corners is where we make more of that contemporary modern strive towards what we all like on this tour, the, the brick and the metal and the glazing. And we limit EFAS and we limit the the wood even or the clapboard because it's we're wanting it to be a little more commercial in nature so i started to see some um some trends that i was like oh this is this is kind of getting there even though it was i drew them in <laughs> but i started to see that um the tripartite or at least treating the base different really made a difference i think for these areas, uh, again, the window trend, the contrast, if you're gonna have the awnings or the doors doing something different. Um, architectural metal was good, red brick was good, and flat roofs were good. So what I gave you um, in your book, and we'll start to work through, um, is what we have now, right? And so it's my attempt to, gather up what we have in our site plan and then our existing commercial design standards. And so we can start to look at it um, with these things in mind. Now the negatives um, context was really important and nothing kitschy. We're not looking for anything sort of franchisee. You know, I, I lived in Arizona for a bit and Sedona, Arizona is the only McDonald's with turquoise arches, right? And they did it because they, they they're yeah. Sedona, Arizona. Sure. And yeah. if you want to have a McDonald's there, then by golly, you have to meet our yeah. design standards. Like exactly. And yeah, so you can cool. really be specific in the things that matter. Yeah. And um, and I think that's fine. I've seen all over the country where franchises will fit your model. And you have some examples of that here already. Well, there's a false second right. story here in town. And Walgreens. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, I'm not proud on, of Walgreens, but I was on committee at the time. So. <laughs> and even on Gallery Boulevard, where the KFC and those those buildings are not your typical uh, retail style. Yeah. Um, square windows didn't seem to fit well. It, some of the, and that was kind of like, oh, they don't like this one. Those are square windows. They don't like that one. That's square windows. The vertical windows yeah. seem to be uh, more preferred. Yeah. And then. Yeah. When you say square, do you? Square versus, two. Two. versus yeah. the rectangle, no, I guess. Yeah. No, legitimate squares. Yeah. Like um, the Fairfield Inn has square windows. There were a couple others that did as well. Yeah, I I would suggest that at the next meeting um, that you bring along some of the new designs that are coming before the planning board, uh, and that would be the unbranded hotel next to Sebago, mm -hmm. uh, and what's going on at the Downs, the the one um, on uh, Highest Parkway that development and the one that we took a look at the sketch plan for um, because those those might ref help us reflect what's architecturally new uh, and, and how architects are, are now thinking about things. So those are some good commercial designs that, that we're seeing now. Well, two of those are specific to the Downs, two of those developments. Um, putting the one on the corner of Market Street and Scarborough Downs, adding the uh, 3i building next to it to show how even a strict um, apartment starts to blend into create a context. And mm -hmm. I think that might be that might be helpful because it really is some new stuff coming in. And what about the multi-unit project on the corner of Muzzy and Payne? Yeah, what is that? Muzzy and on Muzzy, Muzzy and Payne? I mean, Muzzy and 114. Yeah, that, that's the... Um, the multi... The, the AR. Rental. That's the yeah. AR, yes. Yeah, Don't they have design plans mm -hmm. that you... you yeah, know. I can include all yeah. of them. And, yeah, sure. and, and they really um, reflect eight corners, I think, right? what's right yeah. around there. Yeah. 
So yeah, I think, as I said, it'd be helpful to see brand new buildings uh, and styles that sure. people are thinking about. And well, going into Martin's in the parking lot. So Starbucks. going into Martin's in the parking lot Starbucks. right now is oh, the oh. Starbucks and two other okay. off, two other uh, retail spaces, okay. I guess. Um, plan for the future is another building uh, that is parallel to Payne Road with three when they came and presented it to us a couple of years, several years ago now, uh, I think with three office spaces, by doing what they're doing, they are removing impervious surface. Okay. It's actually creating more pervious, more green areas, uh, bringing the parking lot into, into more of what we're looking at now. And so some uh, other negatives, I think that whole, I call it a saloon style, where it's that false facade, the parapet that moves just for no reason, really. Um, you see that a lot in big box and then bright colors and then the low roof pitch um, is a negative. So with that, I want to show you all. This. Give me just a second. I didn't think we'd get here, so. So in the book, like I was saying, you have um, the existing standards and I've color coded them and I feel really bad uh, for Peter because he is colorblind. So I'm not sure if he's going to tell the difference between the blue and the green. Uh, but what I wanted to do is incorporate the existing standards that we have and then reorganize them. And this, I don't know if you all recall a couple of Meetings ago, um, I gave you sort of a draft table of contents of how we could capture everything and add to our site plan ordinance. And so we're working through that. Um, and so with these, every time I open this, there's been different. Yeah, so you did just reorganize. I just right. reorganized everything. And I saw there was a couple placeholders in there. Correct. Okay. Correct. And so there's a placeholder for this village approach of design standards. Okay that if we wanted to add something special or an exclusion or something different, we could and not have to recreate the wheel. So each, right. the idea is to have your basic standards and then for special places, have a few additional, mm -hmm. but not to recreate the wheel for every single right. thing. Yeah. I think that it's an easier digest, I think for developers to look at, to really understand. So. So I just started putting together some examples of architecture that we could look at just to get an idea of what things can look like. And I think that's a great suggestion to give you all some current things that we've been receiving. But just some ideas um, for sure. This is... So these are just strip mall commercial images, and we're just going to run through them quickly. But this is just to get you thinking about things you like or don't like. There's no responses needed. But this is that whole saloon style. But you see there's a lot of red brick. But this is sort of what a strip, a, a current strip mall looks like. There's no landscaping, and there's no foundation plantings on this. One. So those are kind of things to start to think about what works. This one is a different approach. There's a little bit of uh, foundation plantings, a little bit of lighting. This one, you have that two-story look, a lot of blazing. There's fireworks in the back, which always add to the ambiance. This one's a real life version. This one is sort of the more modern materials with the horizontal metal. Um, but again, the roof is very flat. But it's not saloon style, if you will, but it is still, it still has some interesting things with the awnings. This one's got that red brick, a lot of glazing, the second story um, false facade or real facade, if you will, and then sort of an entry feature. But there's a little, very little ephus or concrete on this one. 
Uh, this one, I was going to pick out. This one's a pretty modern look, too. You've got horizontal metal again, quite a bit of glazing, and a mixture of stone, and the roof is more flat. This one's kind of typical uh, with the cornice treatment on the top, but you get a lot of architecture um, with the trellises and everything. So this might be more appropriate like in an Oakville Dunstan sort of setting. It's a little bit more intimate than say, you know, this one is more auto centric and then this one is more people centric because there's shade and there's some different things and you're sort of protected from the cars once you get in. Very typical, meets all your design standards, meets articulation, materials and whatnot, but kind of a lot, again, a lot of roof movement for the sake of roof movement. Sometimes um, I've read a lot of commercial design standards that you just kind of put yourself, you can, you can design yourself into a very monotonous box of things. Uh, so this is sort of an example of that. I think it, very typical yeah. of what I'm used to seeing. Yeah. But I like the fact that the parking is not up front. It doesn't appear to be. Well, this is all on street. This is all going to be parking right there. Okay. But, yeah. but going back to the last one you sh showed right there with uh -huh. the parking in front, my preference is not show all the parking. Here. Sure. And I think when we get to the next... Um, the next part where we start talking about like placement and siding, we have commercial design standards in place now that the parking should not be in front. But what you can do with buildings is really interesting, especially with like a strip mall or big box, you can wrap your buildings and you can do one row of like the on street parking that wraps. Right. And then you can have a, you yep. know, you can work it out to where your parking field is interior. We just, it's a different way of thinking, but you have to sort of require it to make people do it. And so um, I think that's really important. Now, the one row of on-street parking makes it accessible and sort of interesting, like what's going on, but the huge parking lot is very tiring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unless things change along Route 1, you, I don't see how you could do that. Mm -hmm. I just going to be too dangerous, I sure. think. Sure, and right now, we're, we're just talking about eight corners. Okay. So we're still just talking about like the eight corners, yep. and it is more auto-centric. We know it's going to continue that way, but what do we really want to start to look at? Because we're getting some activity out there um, to make sure that we get what we really want so it's cohesive over the next 20, 30 years. Because right. it's going to take that amount of time to redevelop things, but when things redevelop, what do they end up looking like? Okay. There's a new hotel. What's the name of it? Um, over behind the mall that Eric and I both really like. It used to be this really strange yellow oh. cabana looking thing, right? Yeah. And I don't know um, if I included a picture or not, but it's been redeveloped and it's great. It's in South Portland, uh, but it's very contemporary, flat roof. John Roberts Road. Yeah, I think I you know what I'm talking about, yeah. um, but a yeah. really good example of redevelopment yeah. that we yeah. can get in front of because it will happen. Yeah. I mean, it's maybe. the first building on the yeah. left. Yeah. 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 But when you look at what used to be there, completely different yep. um, scenario. So this one is a nice combination. This is one of this has a little bit of uh, foundation plantings, has a lot of foundation plantings, some awnings, mixture of your masonry materials. There's that false second story, but it's not um, completely glazed out. So this one, I think, um, is a nice example. And this is a, a nice example. This one has some of the timbers that I think are appropriate to this region. And then a lot of that red brick again. Um, the exterior, I think this is, you're going to start to see some of this um, exterior patio in the downs quite a bit. But there's nothing to say when you go back to Payne Road Plaza, if say Payne Road Plaza had a re renewal, if you will, maybe part of the side could turn into some of the parking spaces could turn into something like this because it, it's similar. And so you can add a bit um, to really create a little bit more relationship with people rather than the cars because mm -hmm. the sidewalk's only about four and a half feet wide. And then there's the car. And so you want to get in the store as quick, but there's 
some opportunity to redevelop and you could do some things similar to this. Um, this is just sort of a, a newer version. Again, new mix of materials, but these are all very typical strip malls. So there's a lot that um, can happen with these, but this one's a completely flat roof, pretty regular up and down articulation. This one's yeah. a different look, different way of treating the corners. Our existing commercial design standards do talk about the corners being treated special, and I think that's a something you definitely want to keep. Um, this one has that metal roof, and so that adds a little bit of interest to the typical flat movement roof. And then here's Payne Road Plaza. So it's very typical, uh, but there is some opportunity to do something different with it if you can figure out the parking situation. Mm. So good bones, but I think you can see that in in eight corners, especially where we have existing, it's gonna be more about redeveloping or rehabbing, a new facade, facelift, if you will and then making sure the new um, new things blend in with it. <clears throat> this one is all um, like EFAS, right? So again, it's there's a little bit of baked stone, but this is kind of that, the metal and then the EFAS. This one's a combination of stones. So you can just see there's so much out there. Um, you can really get some interesting things um, as we go through these design standards to see what we like and don't like. This one's cool. This one's got that outdoor patio. I really have always been, um, what draws me in when I go to places is landscaping and then how much space there are for the humans. So like it, I have kids so am I comfortable with my kids there and can I walk from this spot to over here and is it is it pretty and what I find like universal pretty is landscaping and greenery and um something a little different you could you could rehab an older strip mall with just really nice landscaping and creating some just a little bit of change in the materials on what you're walking on and mm -hmm. making adding some tree wells and it'd be a whole new um, whole new place mm -hmm. you know it doesn't have to be the latest and greatest but i think landscaping is in your standards as well today we're not going to get through that either um but that's the next project i think to start working on. this one has the clock tower and so this one is a little bit more i think that New England vernacular, if you will, it's got the clapboard on top and brick on the bottom. So this one is really nice because it has a covered walkway the entire length of it. So um, a standard that you may include is if a building facade is over a certain amount of feet, then it has to be covered, right? So we saw a lot that just each individual doorway is covered, right. which is good. But maybe if you get too big, then the whole the whole length of it is required to be covered so that you can go from one to the other conveniently. Because I know when you want to just pop into one store and it's raining, it's okay. But if it's a whole experience, then you want to be able to go around, right? And you're more inclined to walk if you're protected from the shade and the, and the elements. Or protected the, rather. Yeah. Yeah. I have a qu I have a question. Yeah. Pardon me. I have a question, and this slide is as good as many of the others are. The length of the strip, if you're thinking, if you're describing it as a strip mall, see, it seems to be much more attractive, at least to my eye, if you have shorter strips or if they articulate or art, articulated in some way, so you don't have this long expanse. Is there anything in, in zoning or in what you're considering that can uh, limit the length of the strip or at least sort of vary it, not just vertically by articulation, but uh, in and out as well? It's a suggestion only. Yes, you can do all three. We have um, two, so we have vertical and horizontal, um, but you can even add in the length of the building, sure. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we do that as well. the walls. Mm -hmm. You can't exceed 100 feet before you have right. some kind of a. So we have that now, but yep. even to Marvin's point, you could add <clears throat> no building over 250 foot. Right. You know, you can add that too. So it's definitely yep. some tools that are used. But I think you get the idea that there's a lot of different options, um, a lot of different things. I think when we come back um, next time, if you all will sort of go through what we have in existing and then say, oh, it's good and check it. And we'll go through this document um, and start to think about what we like, what we don't like, what we'd like to strengthen a bit. Some of it are some of the things some of them are uh, requirements, but we can go through it very specifically. And then for eight corners, start to think about, you know, do we want to limit materials? Do we want eight corners to be this way or this way? And I think that's some things we can add in um, to the commercial design standards for architectural. And then we can continue that discussion when we go in with landscaping. Maybe eight corners only has 25 plans. And so it's really cohesive for five street trees. And so you start to get some identity and the village starts to have sort of a, a border and you're like, oh, I'm in eight corners um, or I'm in Dunstan. And, and we have that already to some degree, but just to work along those ways of enhancing that. Mm -hmm. And that all trickles down into transportation and it trickles into siding and, and everything that we do, lighting, um, all those things. So it's hard to think about one piece, but this is the first piece that we're going to talk about is just the architectural features. Um, and it may be that we keep what we have and just clean it up a bit and move on to the next village. And it's pretty easy. So that's what I have for today for this part. Okay. Rick, um, I'm confused on what you presented us here. The green and the blue and the black. Uh -huh. So the black is what we have in chapter 405. 405B. 405B, right. It's the existing the site plan. So there's not a lot, but there's a little bit. And the blue is what the commercial design standards, that older document that we have, the blue is all from that. So you're not proposing language change to some specific section? For this, or you combine. I've combined them right. for ease of conversation. Okay. I haven't given you any proposals or anything other than a few words here and there. The green is the proposed, and it's really just a reorganize. But is the end yeah. result goal here to make revisions to the design standards? The end result is to mix that and wow. put it all into the site plan okay. 405. Yes, and okay. so there's one document. It's in our ordinances. It's codified, and that will. This would Go away. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, piece by piece. So Good. we're working on um, the architectural part. Yeah. Sustainability is working on the lighting part right now. And then um, in your packet also that we won't get just for your reading pleasure is landscaping. So um, that's our next agenda item, but I'll briefly go over it. The Conservation Commission took a look at our approved plant list. And so me being a good planner, I'm like, oh, let's clean up landscaping too while we're at it. So they have a new plant list. And then I just did the same exact thing. I captured everything we have in 405 and then in the commercial design standards to give you a look at landscaping. There's no content change at all. I want to take that to ordinance committee to get the plant list adopted, but I want to get you all's input on the format but not change any content right now. I don't think we're there. Um, but that's what it is, Rick, because the, ultimately the idea is to do away with that separate document. So section 405 by Roman 4L kicks you into the designer's use. Correct. Correct. At the end of this process, well, everything piece by will piece. be here. Yes. yes. And that'll be... Yes. Okay. And we'll take that's yeah, that's that's the intent. Intent. that yeah, was the done. table of contents discussion we had a Good. few months ago. Good. Yeah. Good. And I can bring that back. I can continually update that. So do you Come all just strap. have it? Yeah. Like I need to be around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, Good. That's, that's good. Okay. Good. We, do you anticipate a like a, a, an addendum to the site plan mm -hmm. ordinance that would 
Yep. We'd be incorporated. Right all in. incorporated. Be a yes, be one chapter sector. with all of our designs. Right, good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Does that then have to be approved by council? Oh, yes, oh, yeah, yes. Okay. And I, yeah. I anticipated doing it piece by piece because yeah. it's too much to yeah. do it. Sure. So I anticipate um, doing the land, the landscape and it'll probably be done the fastest, uh, but we'll take that and then we'll do a red line version of the commercial design sense. And so each section and then lighting and then the architecturals and then we'll continue to work through it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Thank I you. When we adopted this way, way back when, it was not required. As I recall. It was not required. It was recommended. Okay. We'd say, look at this to get an mm -hmm. idea. We'll be like, right. Now we're talking. And you'll see yeah. um, when you yeah. go through it, there's quite a few du duplications. Over the yep. years, we've captured some things, yep. but not done the other work to get rid of the things. Right, right. So I'm trying to capture those so to not lose yeah. the. Because the, the other problem was, is there was. You read this document that says one thing, you read this document that yep. says another. Yeah. So where are we going? Right. So one document, right? Capture the good, tweak it as we need to, and then move right. on. So. All right. I added an, an agenda item, if you will. Uh, and like I say, hopefully this doesn't take a long time. Our July meeting is scheduled the day after the fourth. Oh, for the Wednesday, for, yes. For the Wednesday. I'm suggesting that in July that we move the meeting to the second Wednesday of the month. A lot of people travel over the 4th or that week, and it might be tough to get, a, you know, a, even a quorum. I'm thinking possibly that might be the case. So I was just wondering if the committee would be okay with changing the date to the second Wednesday of the month. The that's, that's the 12th. That's the 12th. Works for me. Fine with me. Fine with me. Fine with me. We're good? Okay. Staff okay with that? Can we just check the town calendar real quick? I'll have to double check. I can't remember if we have sustainability that morning or not. And um, we have a department head meeting that starts at 10, but as long as we're you're done by then. We can make sure of that. Is it in this building, Karen? Uh it's at public safety, so just just in the parking lot. <coughs> but we should plan on July 12th rather than July 5th. That's my suggestion. Makes just sense. Sense. Nope. That works for us. That okay. works. All right. So <laughs> we'll move the July meeting to the 12th. And thank you all for accommodating the new Wednesday schedule. I know we've been doing Fridays for forever, right? What's so the name? Are working? Do you want? Are you uh, town staff working 10 hours a day? No, this town staff member still works on Fridays. Uh, oh. And then Eric's doing a blend. Most people are doing nine hours and then half day Fridays. Very few people wanted to work 10 hours. But the office is but the not offices all are closed. 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 Yeah, some people nice. Yeah. So we're just Autumn? Closed. Yes. A uh, quick question. I understood at the beginning of the meeting that you created a booklet or uh, that everyone who's attending in person has in front of them from for today's meetings, notes, etc. Yes. Would you please would you please save me one and I'll oh, stop certainly. stop by your office. I'd like to pick one up. Thank you. Yes, sir. It has one. What we got today, if I need to. All right, good. Well, okay. Well, I thank everybody for the additional time that they granted us this morning uh, and uh, the processes that we've gone through. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. If uh, anybody is so inclined, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. What about public comment? I've just questioned. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, do we have any members of the public with us this morning? None, Mr. Chair. All right. So seeing none, once again. I move to adjourn. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. Yes. Rick, any discussion? No. All in favor? Yes. I show that to be unanimous. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you, Eric.
Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you, Karen. Hope you feel better. Uh, yeah. Karen. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, she did a great job on that. Yeah. And Karen really took hits again. Yeah. Uh, guys, I just want to let you know. I didn't want to derail 